All right, guys, that's an official welcome to our webinar uh, about migration from Magento 1 to Magento 2. Um, and uh, I'm really proud to say that MST agreed to join this session because you probably, like, if you're in the Magento industry, you probably know MST is a very successful vendor who supplied quite a bit of extension. We, we, we were lucky as MageCloud, we were lucky to uh, partner with them for, I think, about like five different years. And uh, like every time an MST delivery, great support, et cetera. Um, and uh, I want to welcome and officially introduce uh, uh, Judah as a business development manager and, uh, uh, from MST who will be joining our webinar. Um, like Judah, if you don't mind, just give a little bit like a quick introduction about like what you do, et cetera. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, first of all, Paul, I'd like to thank you again for your invitation. Uh, this is really a great pleasure for me to see so many people join us live. And um, um, it's great uh, to see uh, uh, that there is a great interest in this topic of um, migration from Agenda 1 to Agenda 2, and that's pretty natural um, considering the upcoming end of life. On Magenta One, um, to say uh, also, I wanted to thank you for the kind words about MST as uh, your partner. We're also really proud to have you as our partner, and uh, to be able to hold such events that hopefully will be useful for our customers, partners, agencies, um, and um, many many people. And a few words about myself: uh, I joined MST. Uh, um, probably a, a bit more than a year ago and have been working in the position of business development manager. So I've been working closely, most closely with agencies uh, to help them find the best solutions for store owners and um, build the best Magento 1, Magento 2 stores possible. That sounds awesome. So guys, I really want to make sure there is no sales speeches over here. So straight ahead to the to the point. The reason why we want to join this discussion was almost in all of you here. It's just because there was a scary email by the PayPal and I literally start getting a lot of requests about the migration from M1 to Magento 2, right? And if you kind of come into the different agency, a lot of them just scare over and just give you a heads up, go ahead, migrate, right? So, but I really want to make sure that I I, I, have, I, have, I have to be you know, honest and transparent. So basically, when the people are saying that uh, like, uh, PayPal would not allow Magento 1 starting from June 30, that's actually not that accurate because I'm, as an agency, we still, a lot of, we still have a lot of clients on the Magento 1.9 who is making hundreds of thousands uh, in sales every month. Uh, the store is pretty nice. Everything is good. Uh, conversion is you know, awesome. So basically, for my clients that's on the Magento 1, I decided, right, like I have to email PayPal. And what PayPal replied to me uh, is that there will be no changes made to the PayPal endpoints regarding Magento 1 configuration, right? So if you have your own PayPal account manager, first of all, don't get into the panic. Just go ahead, send them a message. Uh, there is also articles on our blog about this with the video. So potentially you can kind of refer to that and ask them a question, would you be any troubles with, uh, with, uh, with that or not? So, I mean, this is just so you know kind of the information uh, ahead of time. Now, before you, before you go ahead and before you start thinking about Magento 2, I wanna really give you some kind of insight. So if you just Google renewal, like Magento 2 GitHub, right? You will see there will be quite a lot of, uh, it's official Magento repository, right? So basically on the official Magento repository, you still will have about 1,400 issues, right? So, it, like, uh, eventually, uh, we know Magento, uh, Magento doing a good job, you know, raising, like, new versions, et cetera, et cetera. But as a business owner, or, like, you have to understand that those issues still exist. And basically, uh, fixing them over with patches of the Magento, et cetera, et cetera, that will be kind of your responsibility at the end. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if you will be... Uh, Googling, let's say Magento, Magento 2 end of life, you will see that um, like uh, in the official document provided by Magento in terms of the life cycle of the different products, you will see that unfortunately Magento 2.0, Magento 2.1, Magento 2.2, they were originally discontinued even way earlier than Magento 1.9. But at the same time, there is a lot of, you know, business owners still running on the Magento 2.1, 2.2, 
Uh, I even know the, uh, the business owners who is running on the Magento Cloud with the Magento 2.2, and still PayPal and all of the other payment gateways, they eventually still accept the transaction, right? One more stuff that I want to highlight as well. Uh, there, is, uh, there is an upcoming release which will be happening, Magento 2.4, which is, uh, I don't really remember exactly when the release date will happen. Uh, like, it's a pretty brand new, you see, like, five days ago. So eventually, I want to point your attention to a couple of things. First of all, it's like a backward incompatible changes, right? So eventually, what I'm, like, when I'm talking with, uh, with my personal clients about migration, uh, I, I'm always trying to show this that, you know, like, okay, like, the new version 2.4 will come up. Uh, with uh, major changes, like, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to make sure that I, I provide them some sort of a plan for, you know, for, for the migration. And my plan eventually, uh, before you start migrating into the Magento 2, you have to give some love to your Magento 1.9. So for instance, what we are doing those days is, number one, we're migrating all of our Magento 1 clients into Nexus.net, uh, pretty Pretty nice. I, mean, I don't want to be a salesman of Nexus, but uh, like pretty, pretty, um, pretty short. They come over with Nexus Safe Harbor feature, which basically will keep your Magento uh, PCI compliant. So basically, they will still be releasing the security patches even after Magento end of the life. So uh, this is number one what we are doing, and uh, for sure, for sure, before. Uh, before you start migrating, right? It makes sense just to check your uh, Magento 1 version uh, with, let's say, Mage report. So I've got this client who sent me a message, hey, we, we want to do a migration. And then basically when I'm checking using the magereport.com, when I'm checking this website, it seems like they don't really have patches even like back, you know, one year ago, etc. cetera. So uh, like b b before you start, scaring about like all of that type of stuff you have to understand that security it's important but you know if if you are not patching your magento 1.9 then you know like all of those i would say bullshit about like security uh weaknesses etc it's pointless right so basically what you have to do you have to apply uh at least the most recent patches to your magento 1.9 eventually that can be pretty easy task Right. That's so. Even even if you decided to migrate to Magento two, you have to invest the time to do that to protect yourself while you're doing the migration. The next step that I usually recommend is just to integrate the Cloudflare e even with your Magento one point nine. Why? Number one, with Cloudflare as a CDN, you will be a little bit more successful in terms of the speed. So um, it's natively will be speeding up your website in terms of. Um, um, like uh, fast loading CDN, uh, so JavaScript, CSS, images would be loaded much faster just by, you know, you can literally spend like 10 minutes of your time do that, and that's it. Another great point of the uh, Cloudflare, you can configure, and again, that's pretty easy, you can configure some rules here which will protect your uh, Magento admin from, uh, from any connection to your uh, Magento ad admin from the IP addresses, which is not relevant to your office or your personal um, uh, computer. So basically, Cloudflare it's must have even on the M1.9. And the last stuff that I'm recommending to uh, to to my clients uh, with Magento 1.9 is just to um, get to use the system. Uh, there is a bunch of them, like, uh, uh, but like the idea is like get Astra. Probably it's kind of extra extension that can be installed on Magento 1.9 that will be protecting your website against the hackers. So this way, right? If you are 100% happy with your Magento 1.9, by by using those steps, you will you can buy a little bit more time for your business for your store to organize migration into Magento 2, um, in, not in the rush mode, but more carefully, all right? So now, uh, like, let's, let's think, if you will be deciding uh, to migrate to Magento 2, right? Again, so like I said, Magento 2.4 will be uh, pretty soon. So it might, like, depends on your specific case, you might wanna start with Magento 2.3 right now, 
uh, or, or maybe wait a little bit till Magento 4 will be released and then start right from Magento 2.4, right? That's already up to you. Um, but I mean, there is a certain stuff that definitely is supposed to happen uh, to organize this migration uh, carefully. Uh, and the number one concern, it's for sure a concern of losing the trust, right? Like everyone think, okay, so position in, in, in Google Organic and Bing Organic, that's something that we want to stay with. Uh, and I'm getting a lot of businesses who is actually telling, hey, immigration was not really good, et cetera. So how do we want to, how do we want to handle that? Like the number one stuff for sure will be to kind of drop the metrics, you know, how many traffic you are getting, et cetera, et cetera. At the same time, what's important is um, to, or, uh, to take a look into the Google Analytics behavior, site content, and let's say landing pages. So with, with those landing pages, you will be able to define um, basically our, uh, which pages of your website generate you the most of the traffic. Uh, and eventually you can, in, in that particular case, you can uh, you know, kind of pay close attention about specific list of the pages, let's say top 100, uh, which eventually drives you the most traffic. So in that particular case, you can definitely focus on the top one. Another stuff that you have to do for sure is just to, uh, I'm using SEM Rush, right? And basically from here, uh, you can, you know, you can just use your domain, um, lights, depot as a sample, uh, basically, start search and you will be able to un like see which keywords you're ranking for and which URLs eventually you rank for that particular keyword. And that that's pretty much like gives you a data that going forward, when you will be launching Magento 2, you will have to carefully match, uh, you know, the new version of the website with the previous one, all right? And definitely uh, one of the main thing that I wanna highlight to everyone before you start working with the Magento 2, it makes sense to spend some time in clean up your existing Magento 1. How we do it? I mean, technically, when I'm getting the URL of the site, even without getting admin or Google Analytics, etc., I'm checking quite a bit of stuff by default. So first of all, I'm going to, uh, the number one thing that I'm doing is I'm going to the redirectcheck.com, right? Uh, that's basically, I'm, I'm just, getting the page, uh, removing HTTPS, clicking trace, and this way I'm trying to understand if on my original website, if everything configured correctly. M like a lot of times, like it it's, can be fixed very easily on if you are on the Cloudflare. It's just a one single page rule, takes you like five minutes. Basically you see 302 redirect move temporary, which means already like, a, like, like that's a pretty, like an issue with the Google, which is the 301. I know Google is smart enough those days, so probably it's not like a huge issue, but again, like if you will be talking to any SEO guy, uh, they will just tell you, right, like get this fixed. Uh, and uh, and uh, obviously, basically, sometimes, sometimes what happens is, um, uh, sometimes if, like in that case, you see I'm trying to uh, check the same page with www, and you see it goes with the dynamic variable at the end. So that's, that's already like kind of not, not the right approach. The second thing that I'm testing, and uh, it's pretty much robots.txt, right? So uh, again, so this is a pretty much live website, um, you know, built by someone. And if you go to the robots.txt file, for instance, it might, you see here, this is low JavaScript, this is low skin, this is low media, that's already wrong. It takes you three minutes to remove that, and that's already will, you know, will be more credits for the Google, because I mean, by blocking the media content, eventually you're blocking um, like Google from seeing your images. But this one as well, that's, that's totally wrong. I mean, Google recommend that JavaScript and the CSS of your um, site will be, should be available for the index, right? So like checking this one uh, takes you, I don't know, 10 seconds, clean this up, and that's already like a good sign, right? Next one, pay attention to your sitemap on the original M, M, M1.9. Why? It's just because you see here the sitemap is outdated. The last time when the sitemap was generated back in 2015, it's like, I don't know, like five, five almost exactly five, five years ago, which means we're sending to the Google wrong data, right? It's not up to date. And 
some of those pages might produce already 404, et cetera, et cetera. So eventually this is kind of, uh, this is the number one stuff uh, to check on um, M1. Uh, why I'm still talking about the M1.9, you might think about, hey, I mean, it's all about Magento 2 webinar, but if you're not going to clean up all of that on the M1, you know, um, it might happen that a lot of issues will still remain there. So, for instance, we're also checking, uh, like on M1, we're checking duplicating content. So, for example, you just go to Google site, domain name that you have in your uh, limit. And you will see there's a bunch of the results, which is eventually will be treated by Google as a duplicating content. Now, imagine you started things over on Magento 2, and basically, and but the, the results from here will still be uh, like terrible. So eventually, uh, like that's that, that's pretty much like a, a, a kind of uh, will we'll bring you the troubles in your know, with uh, Magento 2, right? There are a bunch of the stuff that you can check. Um, um, catalog search, for example, a lot of times the catalog search pages might be in Google Index. Uh, I would definitely try to search for view ID. I would definitely try to search uh, for like uh, filters, like price and stuff like that. So we, we know exactly where where is the duplication content. Uh, you you can you can search for session ID. Basically, I I will have a slides when all of those different variables you know available. So you can easily go ahead, you run check against your personal website or against your you know, customer website and then kind of suggest them, hey, let's spend like, I don't know, like two days, fix this over on the M1 and, and then proceed ahead with the migration. Now, um, pro like imagine that we already have all of those, you know, ready to go. Magento 1.9 already fixed. We're ready to go with Magento 2. Uh, in, in, in our agency, we have a pretty much like a default list of which task needs to be executed with uh, any Magento 2 store. My recommendation, if you will be doing, um, if you will be doing uh, Magento 2, oh, by the way, this is kind of limit mode, et cetera, th those kind of stuff that you can check and make sure there is no duplicating content, right? So it's already here on the slide. When we start with, with the client, we're always asking, hey, can you tell me where is the location of your uh, of your server, and then from here, like basically, it's pretty easy. It takes again five minutes of your time. Um, you set up like Magento, let's say um, Magento uh, test store here. Um, here, I'm usually typing like Magento, typing like Digital Ocean, and let's say London as a location, right? Um, like you can you can name your you can name your um, like a project etc. You can select location as well like depends on what you want and then basically that's it. You click like launch now and it's and um, uh, Cloudways will automatically boost you the server. You see it's like in seven minutes it will be ready. So if you are like a business owner, right? So basically what happened is are if you want to start with Magento two, just create an account on the Cloudways. Spend ten minutes of your time, get this already, like get it live, and then, um, like we we were able to walk around with the MST. MST have a great uh, packages of the different extensions. We we spent about like two weeks uh, identifying which extension must have, and actually, kind of MST is preparing uh, like a really extensions that any agency is supposed to install. I have to tell one of the stuff, like you may, you may say, hey, like MST, there's a bunch of the other headwords, et cetera. We partner with a lot of them. One of the things that I want to highlight, basically, uh, my preferences is just to, if you will be buying, you know, extension from one single vendor. Uh, it, like, why? It's just because, like, if you're buying from one single vendor, uh, they will make sure that all of those extensions will be compatible without any conflicts, etc. If you are buying extension from like different vendors, trying to save, I don't know, sort of, sort of bots or something like that, end of the day, every vendor that you will be using on the Magento, uh, every module will have like a base, base component. And then at the end of the day, that will be just slowing down the, 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 the Magento itself. So, Basically, I, I really want to pass this over right now, probably to Julia. So imagine by this time, we've got to Magento 1.9, everything is fixed there, everything is good, we checked, we analyzed uh, Google Analytics, we analyzed like landing pages that we have to pay good attention. We boost the server ready with Magento 2 here, 
Uh, and by the way, just so you know, uh, like the last pitch about here uh, was Magento 2. Uh, it, it's already coming with the nice features like varnish. It's already pre-installed. What you have to do is just to update the Magento admin. It's already coming with SMTP um, service. So basically, you can uh, you can select I don't know like um, your own or Elastic email, or uh, you can also get uh, SendGrid, Mandrill, like a different ones. So basically, it's already pre-configured to uh, for the best Magento 2 performance in the infrastructure. So now, once we have the server, we have uh, master credentials like SSH access. Then you shoot a message to Amnesty, and you know, like Judah, I will probably go ahead and just um, uh, pass it over to you, uh, make you as a as a host, so you can share your screen. I also prepared some slides. So. Uh, again, to make it visual, uh, and before before I go to this part uh, dedicated to extensions, uh, I'd like to first of all thank thank you, Paul, again for mentioning the packages. So the ones that you showed are uh, pretty new ones. So these are custom packages that uh, our customers uh, agencies can build um, yourselves. So, and the, the great thing about these packs uh, acts in terms of uh, the migration from Magento 1 to Magento 2 is that uh, they do not just include like 10% to 20% discounts, but also offer some advanced support options, uh, free installation, as you mentioned, and so on. So if you guys are interested, just uh, check out the packs on our website and uh, fill out the forms that we have there, uh, or just email us at support at msd.com and we'll always be happy to help. And uh, um, Paul has already mentioned some important steps for uh, starting or like to get it for getting ready for uh, migration to Magento 2. Um, and uh, I will continue to tell you about some of the must have extensions that are most popular with our uh, Magento 2 clients, such as business owners, web design and development agencies, and uh, digital agencies. And um, I will this time I'll highlight about 15 extensions um, that are also known as modules, plugins, or add-ons. Um, most of you probably know this. Uh, this. These words mean pretty much the same, and um, I will tell you how these extensions quickly extend the default functionality of the Magento 2 platform uh, to help your business so, and online store in particular to perform even better. Um, and so far, Paul has mentioned some um, uh, important steps uh, for uh, migration from Magento 1 to Magento 2 and uh, about some SEO solutions and uh, activities. And I'll start now by talking about uh, some back-end uh, extensions, um, specifically about Greendex from Admin and Cron Scheduler from Magento 2. And um, I'll show you how these two make the life of website administrators a lot easier. So let's let's take a look. Uh, Reindex from admin. Um, and uh, here I need to say that one of the most common um, challenges that you'll come across after migrating to Magento 2 is that unlike Magento 1, in Magento 2 you can run reindexing only from the console. And um, if you're not familiar with this tool, or if you don't want to open the console for this small task, uh, you can use um, some extensions, for example, our reindex from admin extension. And um, this extension allows you to start reindexing right from the admin panel, and just like it was in Magento 1. So it should be really helpful. Uh, so the second extension that I highlighted is Cron Scheduler. And, um, Another challenge that you may face when working with Magento 2 is that a lot of processes are performed uh, automatically via cron and um, you don't really have a chance to control these processes from your admin panel. You cannot edit the cron tasks, you cannot choose when and how often they should be run and so on. And to make things easier for non-technical specialists, we have developed this cron scheduler extension. And with the friendly interface, uh, you'll see what tasks are complete and uh, what tasks are planned. And um, at the same time, if some cron tasks provoke uh, errors, this extension will send you a notification. So this should uh, also be really helpful. 
Um, so probably that's it from me for the backend and for the two backend extensions. I'll now move on to uh, shopping cart and checkout process. Um, and uh, I'd like to say that these are considered to be probably the most critical parts of any online store. And um, today, um, as you most likely know, people who buy online expect uh, the checkout to be smooth, instant, and effortless. Uh, meanwhile, the standard Magento checkout is quite lengthy and complex, and the interface is pretty cumbersome. Uh, so this can be a real problem if uh, it pushes a significant number of your potential customers, especially those who are not sure whether you, they are going to purchase um, a particular pr product or not. These customers can be pushed to leave your store and go somewhere else, which certainly we do not want. And extensions like the One Step Checkout by MST, uh, this is one of our best sellers. They help you make the, the checkout process as swift and clear as possible by placing all the information fields on one single page. And our checkout page is customizable and you can choose the location of the blocks and their names if you need to. Uh, the one-step checkout allows users to conveniently edit the order before placing it. So for example, it's possible to change the product colors uh, or sizes without leaving the page which is really important for reducing uh, card abandonment. So another extension that helps to reduce card abandonment is Ajax Shopping Cart. And here I need to say that uh, whenever users leave the cart page to add another product of a different size or color, we are running the risk of losing them. And it's especially true for the stores that have thousands of products in the catalog and um, a slow loading speed. So uh, the Ajax shopping cart extension, uh, it helps online stores with uh, a nice Ajax pop-up and confirmation window that allow users to edit the number of goods in the cart without having to leave the page. And uh, with the pop-up, you can customize the colors as well as the buttons um, and the tags. And besides, uh, as you see in the slide, the pop-up has a block with related products. Uh, which is also really great for cross-selling. Uh, and one more uh, feature that helps to increase the number of complete orders is um, abandoned cart email. Sometimes you, we really cannot prevent cart abandonment and some users will, will leave your store without placing an order. Uh, still, you can try to bring them back by sending emails. For example, our abandoned cart email extension will automatically send an email notification to the customers who left their um, shopping cart behind. And uh, you can even offer a discount, as you see in the slide here, uh, in this email, and direct the customers back to the checkout page to motivate them to complete the purchase. And uh, you also have some handy reports in the extension to analyze the performance of your email campaigns. And as we've started talking about promotions and discounts, uh, I should mention that Vanilla Magento 2 unfortunately offers limited opportunities for running marketing campaigns. We have just some basic features like displaying related recommended products or showing um, discount code fields on the front end. And extensions like uh, Special Promotions Pro uh, come to our aid here. Uh, if we talk about Special Promotions Pro, it's one of the most advanced promotion extensions that we have. It offers uh, 20 plus promotion types, like uh, if you spend $300, uh, you will get a $40 discount, buy three TVs and get third for $89, or for example, buy pants and get a tie with 10% uh, $10 off and uh, some other, other um, promotion types. And you can run advanced promotions based on product attributes, customer attributes, and even the customer's order history, or a combination of these. Also, you can restrict promotions for, uh, for example, products with special prices. And um, the extension uh, offers uh, some handy visuals like banners and labels that you can use out of the box on your front end. 
Okay, so another great way to increase your sales and attract more customers is to promote your products on shopping platforms like Amazon, Google Shopping, eBay, or Facebook. And um, there are some extensions that help Magento stores to easily generate product feeds for such platforms. For example, our product feed extension. And uh, what this extension does is uh, allows you, it allows you to create product feeds and to automatically upload fresh data from your store to third-party marketplaces. Now let's uh, say some words about uh, navigation and search uh, that are no less important parts of Magento 2 stores. It is um, really crucial to ensure that customers coming to your online store can easily navigate it and find what they are looking for in a matter of seconds. Uh, otherwise, they will leave the store uh, and um, one of our best-selling extensions, Improved Layered Navigation, allows for um, tackling this challenge uh, and uh, it makes it possible to set up flexible product filtering on the category page. Um, this uh, extension uses Ajax technology that we already mentioned a bit earlier when we talked about Ajax, uh, Ajax shopping cart. And uh, this technology um, shows the filtering results without page reloading. And um, besides, users can refine their search by using the multi-select, price slider, and from two widgets. Um, our extension, Improved Late Navigation Extension, has some advanced filters like brand, new, top rated, in stock, and on sale. And um, what is also interesting, it allows for shopping by brand, which is um, uh, quite a big feature uh, for our extension and uh, makes it a bit different from other, um, other um, extensions and solutions on the market. And another great tool for improving the navigation experience is a mega menu. Again, the faster the customer finds the product they like, the lower the ch chances of them leaving your store. And the mega menu extension helps create a dynamic horizontal menu with all types of content. It can be categories and subcategories, products and reviews, uh, CMS blocks, banners, videos, and so on. And um, this extension allows for adding an Amazon style hamburger menu to the category tree. And um, you know, well, it makes pretty much impossible to um, get lost on the site. Uh, and when it comes to search, um, Magento recommends using the Elasticsearch engine. And um, here at Amnesty, we offer Elasticsearch e extension that works with this engine. Uh, the plugin allows for searching um, by product SKUs, uh, names and attributes, uh, short and full product descriptions, um, so the search is really flexible. Uh, the extension also supports um, multilingual search, synonyms, uh, stop words, uh, autocomplete suggestions, like uh, we see in the slide here. Uh, also um, supports uh, spelling corrections. Besides, you can draw visitors' attention to specific products by showing them at the top of search results, and you can also display the out-of-stock items last in the search results. So thanks to all, all these features, the Elasticsearch extension uh, helps to quickly find products by providing accurate search results. And speaking about speed, Page load time is uh, also a crucial consideration for online stores uh, in terms of the bounce rate and conversions. And um, um, let's say if it takes more than three seconds for the first uh, content of your web pages to load, you really risk losing up to 50% of traffic. And um, there are many ways to optimize your website speed, but almost all of them require strong technical skills. Uh, which not many people have, not, or at least not all the people have. And luckily these, uh, uh, well, there are extensions that can speed up your store without um, making you dive deep into coding. And our Google Page Speed Optimizer extension is a good example here. This extension optimizes images, it enables lazy loading, minifies and merges uh, CSS and JavaScript files, uh, and optimizes HTML. 
I'll also want to say a few words about shipping uh, because it's uh, another critical functionality for Magenta stores. Um, and uh, the challenge that businesses face is that the default shipping methods may be insufficient or uh, lacking. Um, and uh, it's really uh, hard or impossible to add custom shipping methods without uh, programming skills. If you need or your store needs uh, more advanced shipping features, then solutions like Shipping Suit um, can be of great help. It's so, an end-to-end um, solution that um, includes uh, shipping table rates, shipping rules, and shipping restriction, restrictions. And um, it allows for creating and customizing an unlimited number of shipping methods and table rates. So, for example, if you need uh, for your store, you can restrict delivery to specific regions. You can calculate the shipping price based on dimensional or volumeric weight. You can work with any postcodes, including non-humeric if you need to. And you can uh, easily import or export your shipping rates with CSV files. Other needs or also include compliance with uh, data protection regulations. So let's say a few words about GDPR and CCPA. So if you make your store available for access by European Union citizens, you need to make sure that the store is compliant with the EU general data protection regulation. And also if you sell in California, United States, you need to comply with the California Consumer Privacy Act. So um, there are extensions, again, that can help you do this. Um, and our extensions are some of them, and uh, what they do, they inform your visitors about your privacy policy and let them manage what data you can gather and analyze. So users can see, download, and request to delete the files that are stored on your servers. And um, the extensions will help you avoid penalties by asking customers for all their required consents, including cookie consent. And I'd like to say just two words about spam. That is another problem. And uh, it's uh, really important to solve it uh, before publishing any re request forms on your front end. And recapture extensions uh, like our Google Invisible Recapture by, by MST. Uh, I will talk about our products uh, because I know them best. Uh, such uh, extensions uh, will protect your forms from spam attacks and uh, they will not allow bots to jeopardize it. And um, if we talk about MST's recapture, uh, it supports both Google recapture versions two and three and it doesn't require all users to solve all uh, to solve the puzzles. It only filters uh, suspicious activities. And last but not least, uh, many stores use uh, Magento themes uh, different from the default Luma theme uh, in order to improve the aesthetics, usability, and graphic appeal. And um, at Amnesty, we don't have uh, themes available yet, uh, as you probably know, but we are planning to release a better version of uh, our own theme uh, that is called Jet Theme. Um, and uh, we are planning to do this in June, this June. And uh, with our theme, we've been focusing on delivering a uh, clean design and keeping the performance stable. And we've been really emphasizing the performance part, which is really important when we talk about themes. And uh, you will not need to worry about any incompatibility issues with uh, the top uh, MST extensions. And um, your story will meet the latest uh, UX UI tendencies um, because the, the theme will um, come with lifetime updates. I'd like to wrap up by saying a few words about the um, extension packs that we currently offer. Paul has already kindly mentioned these uh, custom uh, packs, uh, and uh, you see that we offer some benefits like 10 to 20% um, discounts, so six months of free support, uh, free installation service, and 90-day money-back back policy if you find that uh, the solutions are not suitable for your project. Also, uh, if you're interested, we have some ready-made packs uh, that are focused on you know, some specific challenges like site speed, loss-free checkout, multi-channel retail, stock control, COVID business recovery. So if you're interested in any specific ready-made packs or some custom packs, 
just uh, reach out to us, um, uh, fill out the forms on the website or um, email us at support at msc.com um, and we will be happy to help you find the, the most suitable solutions. The, the, the bottom line over here is like Amnesty will take care about installation of all of the extension that will configure it for you. It will be free of charge, like free installation, so which, which is nice. Now imagine you have actually, you, you have already like a server up and running on Cloudways. You have Amnesty extension uh, installed over there. Uh, basically, what's the next? Next step will be the data, data migration. Usually for our clients, we recommend to use shopping cart migration tool with our coupon code MageCloud20. It's just, they will basically migrate all of your data, like uh, product, customers, orders, into your Magento 2 store. Uh, so now, let's imagine that you migrated already this website, right? Like the, mom, the number one stuff to check before you go live is, uh, you either keep all of the URLs the same, which is ideal, or organize the 301 redirects, right? Ideally, if you wanna maintain the traffic, keep title and meta description the same, keep H1 and text on the pages the same, right? That's a very clear thing that needs to be implemented. Um, make sure that you check robots.txt file, make sure that your sitemap generated daily, make sure that the redirect is correct, make sure, make sure that you will be using CDN for the JavaScript CSS like Cloudflare, verify that you have Google Tag Manager, Facebook Pixel available, Verify that you are um, Magento running in the production mode because sometimes I'm getting like clients who is running on the default or development mode for any reason. Don't use Magento default bundling. Don't use Magento flat catalog and stuff like that. Uh, make sure that canonical is not missing. Uh, make sure there is no duplicate in the da data and uh, there is no bots and subscribers, right? So eventually, basically, uh, I, I will show you right now how I'm usually doing that. So like, like, let's imagine this is the prospect that just come in. Uh, I'm using an ex extension code Meta SEO Inspector, right? So before you go live, please just walk through the site, make sure there is no like a red one, like canonical is not missing, like H1 tag, because otherwise, if you will be running, if you will be launching this incorrectly, the cost of mistake will be so high. So uh, like from our end, from our agents, so we also regularly check in different websites. So if you want to send over your staging site, I will be happy to spend 10 minutes of the time, send you the video, not a fancy PDF report, but just the video, and I will just explain to you the issues that's there, right? So please make sure that also you, uh, when you launch with Magento 2, please make sure that you install the product snippet. One of the stuff that I wanna highlight is also about the ratings, which is a lot of businesses missing. So uh, I, I'm getting like a clients who are using like Trustpilot, Shopping Approve, all of those kind of um, nice, nice uh, um, review system, which is uh, tracked by Google. So make sure you integrate the special code into the website that will allow you to push these ratings into the Google. So your snippets on the new website should not be just the boring. You, you, you f feel free to use like a special characters. Feel free to use those ratings like that one. Uh, and like I said, like on, uh, the, on, our, um, on our blog, we, we published the article about all of that, how to make it, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's really useful, like small things matter. Uh, please make sure that uh, when, you go, when you go live, please make sure, uh, again, that's very critical, I'm getting this all the time. When you are in Google Analytics, you click here and you create like a created new annotation. Like that's the day when you go live from Magento 2 because otherwise you're coming back to the agency and the agency have no idea what, 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 what happened. So make sure that you have it as well. Make sure that you keep tracking and you upload the new sitemap, right? Because the new sitemap, it's a must have. So you should for sure have the Google Search Console. And as soon as you go live, please kind of go here, please uh, eventually upload the new sitemap. And what's important is, please uh, pay attention to the Google Search Console every single day because sometimes we're getting the clients when, like you see here, like there is a, um, almost 17,000 of the URLs, but half of those pages are not in Google Index. So especially for the businesses with a lot of URLs, that's my big challenge uh, that you wanna really, really, really resolve. I, I wanna be transparent as possible, you know, and give you all this information. I will give you even approximately how much time will take uh, and uh, any questions, guys, you know, feel free to address right now. That's probably the best way to, to go over. Um, 
So, uh, Julia, thank you so much for, for, for amazing, you know, things. I will go into the Q&A uh, section right now. So if anyone have any questions, feel free to, to send over here or inside of the chat. So do we have any points for marketing guys in this webinar? Uh, I think a lot of stuff that I, I was talking about, like on this webinar, I don't want to teach you Magento 2, right? There's tons of tutorials and uh, I like I, I was not ready to kind of go through the Magento 2 backend and the code, etc. There's tons of the videos as well. I, I'm trying to educate business owners just about the different options and uh, how they how they can. Um, yeah, I will do. I will I will send the recording for sure. Uh, it will be recorded. So uh, a lot of th things here. It's about marketing conversion. Uh, you know how to not lose the traffic and basically steps what to do. Right. So and any questions, further questions, just shoot me an email. Um, you know, and I will be happy to advise. Can I have a recorded session uh, to check out MS recommended extension pull recommendation? Yeah, it will be all here. Uh, the, the presentation will be here. The video will be here as well, right? Um, recording, uh, would I wait? Um, okay, so that's a good question. Would, would you wait until Magento 2.4? Would you start migration 2.3? Again, I, I tried, uh, uh, I, I tried, I tried to explain like, all my Magento 1.9, I moved to Nexus and I, they will stay there for one year at least, right? We are not going with 2.3, 2.4, uh, but at the same time, if your website right now don't really produce you any results, then eventually, you know, like you, you want to you wanna still fix it, right? You want to you wanna make sure it's working for you. So it depends on the situation in your business. If you, tell, if you bring me the URL, I can tell you, hey, if, if there's tons of issues with your Magento 1.9, then probably migrating uh, might be a good option, right? Any tips and tricks related to data migration tool? So let me tell you, um, basically shopping cart migration, if you send them a, a, an email, they will, just, uh, they will just eventually migrate it all for you, right? There are tons of tools, shopping cart migration, light extension, uh, even Magento Prodigy default tool, what they normally do are uh, um, like um, so. Basically, I I want to I want to suggest like if you reach out, they have amazing onboarding stuff, and they will just do it for you, right? Uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty kind of the answer about the migration. You have to differently migrate customer information, order products are, but again, it's very configurable. If you want to migrate just products and um, um, and categories, that's will be it. If you want to also migrate customers and orders, uh, for sure you, you you can do it. You know, uh, would you recommend Docker size uh, the services? So I have I have a nice video which I probably can uh, can um, uh, can kind of somehow share as well because we we've just recorded a nice se uh, session with our solution architect. The, there is a great. Uh, things that we recorded visibility public um, that's about the configuration I will also send it over um, into this live chat to answer the question if if someone want to uh, check this over uh, let me take a look uh, uh where's that would you recommend all right thanks for the response uh which is the best hosting for magento 2 with 2k products all right so let me let me tell you <clears throat> about the hostings i, I don't want to promote like specific one there's a bunch of the ones uh we have clients on mage module uh on cloudways i mean when i'm saying cloudways it does not mean the cloudways they they have they own they have owned data center we still like digital ocean right or amazon or you know that that's up to you like i said technically uh, technically, we mostly use DigitalOcean because they offer you like a, a, the price, like a fixed price for the server, unlike, unlike uh, uh, Amazon, right? When you're still uh, charging for the traffic, etc. So, but there's a bunch of them. Uh, Mage Moja, um, eBond Host. That's at least uh, UK fast if you're in UK. So technically, what I'm when when someone asking me, hey Paul, what's the hosting vendor you want to recommend? I'm asking, hey. You know, do you need like a phone support? Because CloudWaste does not really provide you the phone support. If you are like an emergency business, you have you're making huge profit, then probably something like Nexus with the phone support in the US, UK, Australia, 
um, and um, uh, UK fast if you're in the UK. Um, like that's kind of will be probably the choices that I have. Should I use Mage 1 to secure my Magento 1 until I do the upgrade? So let me tell you, I, I had a brief, I have a, I had a brief kind of uh, messages with them about the system and the patches. So I still want to tell you, yes, that's probably Open Mage initiative. It's one of the options. Again, with, with, my, with my clients, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a different way. It's just because like Nexus is kind of solid company. Uh, I have a lot of clients there and that's why it's much be easy for me just to move them all there because it's will like, honestly, I know like with Nexus, if some troubles happen, they will never tell you, hey, this is Magento issue on the server, it's all fine. Um, I knew it from, from experience. They will always dive deep and, and do that. So, I mean, like for sure, you will have to do something about the M1, right? So if you're on M1, for sure, like you can, you can, you can, um, uh, you can go ahead and stay with it. Um, uh, how to choose the theme? So my, <laughs> my point is, uh, and, and unfortunately that happens because sometimes people go in, they buy sort of theme and they come back and they want me to improve the speed. But one of the, one of the issue with the theme is just, it comes over with like five different layouts. A lot of themes like pretty heavy, it's very hard. It's, it, and then theme comes over with a different extension, right? So if you will be, if you will be installing something else, there is a great chance that it will be all conflicting over. Are like in terms, in terms of the themes, are I think one of their uh, theme that I'm more or less kind of tested myself, that was Argento, right? Uh, again, I don't wanna be a salesperson of all of this, uh, but Argento theme is the one that I really tested, you know, for a couple of clients. Uh, like I, I know someone with Porto, um, so, but again, like that's already up to you. Um, I, it was, was the normal business that we work, I would highly recommend just to play around with the default Luma and then customize it a little bit, okay? And will my friend the URS migrate? So about the data migration, yes. So Magento 2, you can upload all the URLs. If you're using uh, shopping cart migration, all of those URLs will be migrated properly. It would not be any um, things. Any Magento 2 course you can advise. So I can for sure, um, uh, again, I don't wanna be promoting like Magento once, but again, if you want to, uh, that's the guys that I really like. It's uh, Real training, right? So basically, are like they have they have like a different programs, front end, back end, etc. Um, like honestly, I'm not a Magento developer. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm I'm the guy who's looking into analytics, you know, such console and doing like uh, the stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, <laughs> where's that? Let me go back here. Um, simple info. I have to jump in another. Uh, Okay, let me go back because it's a little bit hard to keep tracking. Is there a Nexus alternative in EU? So that's a great question. I mean, I, I, I did not really hear anything about like um, the host, like one of the hosting that I, uh, which I know they probably uh, in EU is MGT Commerce. But I don't know if they even coming back with any sort of um, kind of plan of supporting. But don't get me wrong. Like, let me, let me explain you how it will work. So basically, our, there is a certain um, um, services like Trustwave, right? Trustwave, uh, which is scanning your website, or uh, like if you buy for sure, like package, they will scan your uh, system in terms of the like, PCI things. So even you are on the different hosting, like not Nexus, right? Basically, you can still maintain, you can get the patches from the OpenMage, et cetera, and install it, and as long as you, your website will be matching with PCI compliance. Let me tell you, Nexus would not install patches for you. What Nexus will do, it will alert you that, hey, this is the new patch which is available, install it, right? So pretty much they're doing exactly what Magento is doing those days. So let me see if there are any, anything else here. Yeah, I think, I think I answered most of the stuff from here if I, if I, um, missed anyone uh, or someone else having a question, feel free to email Julia and me uh, at ms.com, meachcloud.net or meachcloud agency and we'll, we'll be happy to answer over. So that's a good question about PWA. Um, you know, like 
I know I know there's an, a lot of a lot of things going about PWA, but I do expect that the, the price of their project eventually would be way more higher than uh, like the normal small business can afford. So uh, I like for now again I will be quite honest with you. For now, we as an agency we are not doing PWA for all of my clients. It's just it just probably are again like. I would rather I, I, I'm with my clients. I'm waiting for 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 the most more stable things. Okay. Uh, post the link about the doctorization of the service. I posted the video. I posted the video uh, about. Um, I posted the video uh, about this one. So Boris, if you don't mind, like I can. It's it's better for, for me to connect you with my chief technology person, and he will be able to answer the question if you don't mind. <clears throat> But the video somewhere I posted here in the chat, like like YouTube video, etc. So uh, the next one, uh, can you advise good extension for B two B marketplace? Or like I can I can tell you guys like B two B a module in Magento available by default, but I don't think it's marketplace. So recently, all like we were working with, we were recommending a couple things. But again, don't get me wrong, I I don't want to tell you like which one is the best. So uh there are three companies at least the one which i know webcool i i sent them quite a bit of uh they have a product called marketplace marketplace.webcool.com so i sent them quite a bit of um you know clients uh but um again some um i, I don't want to promote specific one this this uh CED commerce and the last one um, Unergy.com, they also have a solution for the marketplace. I would highly recommend you to explore that one because it seems like a pretty solid, but again, unfortunately, there is no demo. So unfortunately, I would not be able to just to give you, there is no price information, etc. So unfortunately, I would not be able to give you like a, um, like more, more, more or less like a things, but it seems like it's my work exactly the way. So if you want, uh, if you want the links, are, I, I will quickly just send you over a couple of those um, again, just to give the value, oh, guys. Like that's that's my um, um, okay. All right, I I, I had contract. Okay, yeah, but I, I like, again, guys. Like I, the question was which one. Like I I know, so <laughs> I would rather like don't get me wrong. I'm just the I'm the same guy, you know. <laughs> like same as you. I'm challenging with all this magenta thing, and <laughs> so. I learn every day, you know, some, like even from you guys. So like we all the community. Um, so uh, can you share your Trello M2 templates? Yes, I can, uh, but just send me an email so I can share with you, okay? Uh, like, is it possible for me to make it public? Uh, let me do this way. Uh, I will show menu uh, more uh, copy board. I will just go ahead here. Uh, M M two default uh, public, right? Um, that's probably will be the ones I, I will I will delete it. Uh, I will delete it. Uh, I don't think I have any sort of private information. At least should not have. Um, yeah, but uh, if you were looking for more. Uh, link to this board uh uh-huh you see only board members can see it can i change this to public um <laughs> uh to all right guys let's do this way i will figure this i don't want to waste too much of your time i will figure this out and i will include this link as well you know somewhere in the newsletter or somewhere else okay just don't want to waste the time perfect guys so uh yeah, thank you, thank you, Julia. Thank you, everyone. It was really like it was my pleasure to be quite honest, you know, to to see all of you. Um, and again, I apologize if someone wasted time. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been really informative for me. And um, well, my guys, if uh, we at MST can be in any way helpful for you for you with your project, just email us, and uh, we'll be happy to help. All right. Bye, bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye.